today is the 21st day of Elul. And if you are familiar with Lord Jesus' house of prayer, the 21st day of the month in the Lord's calendar, I remember, you know, when I first received this revelation, I used to do that in the Gregorian calendar. And then after that, I did it on the Gregorian calendar and on the Lord's calendar. And then one day, Jesus said to me, what calendar is it for? I said, your calendar, Lord. He said, why are you wasting your time? On the 21st day of the Gregorian calendar, I said, yes, sir. <laughs> I changed that very quick. Yes, you must be willing to obey your God. Today is a day when you must confront the evil one and all his spirits, all his demons. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you something today. My brothers, my sisters, listen very carefully. These things, you are not going to hear them outside of this ministry. This is given to me by the Lord, your God, Jesus Christ himself. In the book of Daniel, chapter 10, verse 13, you are going to find out something here. But the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm talking about spiritual stuff here. The prince of the Persian kingdom. And I'm going to reveal something to you. There is a prince of the United States. Every city, every state. Hallelujah. Has a prince assigned to it. Even this city of Pamkos here has a prince. Hallelujah. We were in Daytona, the prince of that city of Daytona. <laughs> Whoa. Rise up against us. And, you know, that angel, that visitor, said, I was there fighting for 21 days with the prince of that kingdom, of that Persian kingdom. When you enter a month, I'm going to tell you what happened to Daniel entering a month, and he, he entered a fight for three weeks, three times seven, 21 days. Well, you are going to read that. In chapter 10, verse 1. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a revelation was given to Daniel, who was called Belshazzar. Its message was true and it concerned a great war. The understanding of the message came to him in a vision. Verse 2. At that time, I, Daniel, mourned for three weeks. I ate no choice food, no meat or wine, touched my lips, and I used no lotions at all until the three weeks were over. So he was on a fast, on a fight. And he said, I will not eat any meat, I will not drink wine, 
can even go further. So I will not put no lotion. That means stay away from me. <laughs> Amen. You know, when you read the Bible, you have to have a little fun. You say, oh, yeah, I would just stay away from you, damn you. <laughs> no lotion. But guess what happened? On the 24th day of the first month, that was in Abib, that happened to him. As I was standing on the bank of the great river, the Tigris, that means Iraq, amen and amen, I look up and there before me was a man dressed in linen with a belt of the finest gold around his waist. His body was like chrysolite, his face like lightning, his eye like flaming torch, his arm and his voice like the sound of a multitude. Amen and amen. So you know he was in the presence of an heavenly being right there. Because we don't see the appearance of crystal light over here. Oh no. <laughs> I, Daniel, verse 7, was the only one who saw the vision. The men with me did not see it. But such terror overwhelmed them that they fled and hid themselves. Amen, amen. Sometimes you can see something, nobody else sees it, but they said, oh boy. <laughs> I, I remember my dear wife said, oh, you know, is it you, Patrick? <laughs> and then she was like, <laughs> what to flee? <laughs> I said, okay. That was a spiritual experience, right? Was... So I was left alone gazing at this great vision. I had no strength left my face turned deathly pale and i was helpless then i heard him speaking and as i listened to him i fell into a deep sleep my face to the ground sometimes when god wants to speak to you he has to put you in, in a deep sleep he said was i dream was i dream amen and amen verse 10 a hand touched me and set me and set me trembling on my hands and knees he said daniel you who are highly esteemed consider carefully the words i am about to speak to you and stand up for i have now been sent to you and when he said this to me i stood up trembling he was on his knee on his knees trembling now he stood up, trembling. <laughs> Amen, Amen. That will happen to you in the presence of an heavenly being. And you are going to get some explanation here. Verse 12. Then he continued, Do not be afraid, Daniel. But before I, I continue the reading here, but you know, look at, look at the report. Look at the report of this being. You are highly esteemed. How many of you would like God to say that about you? You are highly esteemed. Amen, amen, amen. You are a special person. Amen. Let's continue. Do not be afraid, Daniel. Since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. And I have come in response to them. And he's going to explain something to Daniel. So you see Daniel for 21 days, he was fasting, praying, because there will be a great war. And you know, between the two kings, at the end of the chapter, you are going to see what happened between the king of Persia and the king of Mede. So, and then, verse uh, 13, this is where he said, you know, I, I could have come to you earlier, but I was in a fight with the prince of the king of the Persian kingdom. My God, my God. So sometimes, your prayers 
you know, God said, yes to it. But there are princes over your city trying to stop you over your job. Like the Lord said to me, everything is spiritized. And anyway. So you imagine you're living in a city, there is a prince there watching you, watching you. And, and he's there to stir up the, the pack against you and, and go to those people who and say, don't you see this guy there? You see? And then suddenly they hate you, they jealous, they're attacking you. And he said, what's going on, Lord? What's going on? And the Lord has to teach me a little something. Say, yeah, the prince over there in Detroit that didn't want you around with that good gospel of yours. Because as you know, this is a practically the most perfect city. You know? People are coming in and out, those tourists, they come and, and pervert the community and get out of there. You know? and, and nobody is interested in the gospel over there for real. And one pastor I met when uh, in Daytona, the first guy said, you know, this is where the pastors come to die in Daytona. And, uh, you know, and that was a church that started in the 1800s and they barely have 40 people, 40 members. And if 10, 12 show up on Sunday and they have a big size church. And he said the whole neighborhood was was ours. We have to sell in order to keep us at free. And they are reducing in, in two lots. And they said the whole place was ours in the eighteen hundred. They bought the whole area. Amen and amen. So you got my brothers, my sisters, what I'm saying to you, in this day, you know, at twelve. And at 3 o'clock, I'm going to have two sessions, praying for people. Hallelujah. But, you know, my prayers, you know, for you will not be sufficient if you are ignorant of what is going on in your neighborhood. There is a prince in your neighborhood. There is a prince in your town. There is a prince in your job trying to fight you because they say, oh, this is Christian. Uh, you think you can convert everybody here, you know? If you come to call up, you're welcome. <laughs> you're well, if you come to call up, you, oh, you're gonna be in that gossip, you're gonna be in that sleeping around. Oh yeah, we want you. <laughs> but as soon as you said, oh, I'm a Christian, mm -hmm. Jesus, Jesus, he said, whoa, you know, that guy here, you know? And to a point where you, you see Christians, you know, when they go to church, he said, uh, church is church. Monday, I, I turned my heart, my heart. <laughs> they had two hearts <laughs> because this is Monday. He said, devilish time. I said, whoa, no, no, no. It should not be this way. But one thing he's going to say to him, and uh, actually, Let's continue with the reading because we will get some instruction to it. He said, now, verse 14, now I have come to explain to you what will happen to your people in the future for the vision concern a time yet to come. Amen and amen. So, after 21 days of prayer, hallelujah, he said, I was in a fight for 21 days. That means until my call come show up on that 21 days, we were able to overcome that prince of the Persian kingdom, and now I can come to you. So today, every 21 day, 21st day of the month, should be your day to say, okay, that's it. I want my victory here. And this is why we do the casting out of foul spirit. I do it for my partners, but you do it at your house. Tell wife, come over here. Or wife, tell husband, you know, come over here. Hold that hand. 
and said, let cast you out some foul spirit. <laughs> I see some on you, or you have I see some on you, and then you do, you, you, you cast out. You know? You, you cast them out for what? To make sure that you do not repeat the behavior in your house. You, you do the things of God in your house. But let's, let's jump because you can continue the reading yourself. And later on, he said, you know, you are a highly esteemed person again to, to, uh, to Daniel. But verse 20. So he said, do you, do you know why I have come to you? Soon I will return to fight against the prince of Persia. You will go again to fight. <laughs> Amen. And when I go, the prince of Greece will come. But first, I tell you what is written in the book of truth. You say, whoa, there is a book of truth. There is a book of truth, my brother, concerning your life. Concerning your life, my brother, concerning your life. Like if you see you are living in a lie, you are in the book of lie of the devil. You say, God, you know, I've been living in the book of lie, according to the book of lie of the devil. Now I want to live. Hallelujah. What is written for me in the book of truth? Amen and amen. And then he said, he said something extraordinary. No one support me against them except Michael. And we enter a little bit, Michael, your prince. And we enter a little bit in verse 11. And in the first year of Darius the Mede, I took my stand to support and protect him. And later on, you will see the good thing the Lord prophesied concerning King Darius. Amen and amen. Glory to God. You see, God, my brother, if you get, and my sisters, if you get that, you will understand something. Today is a day to take your stand because you have good princes, good angels taking a stand for you. Taking a stand for you. There are evil princes, that means evil angels, evil demons out there fighting you. But also you have good princes and they identify that Michael is one of the prince in charge of the people of Israel. He said, Michael, your prince, he came and helped me in that fight. Today is a day to get victory over your endurances and stronghold. And when you do that, my brothers, my sisters, you will enter total deliverance and you will be able to live in the likeness of Jesus Christ. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the world, to heal the sick, to pray for the afflicted and reveal unto them the purpose of God for their lives. Surely, the Sovereign Lord does nothing without revealing His plan to His servants, the prophets. The Lords want me to give you an opportunity to be a part of His movement through Lord Jesus' house of prayer. According to Malachi 3, verse 8 to 12, you can do so by sending your tithes and offering online or to the address listed on our website. All tithes and offering are prayed over, and whatever words the Spirit will bring forth, these I will report. And the Lord promised to bless you and to open for you the flood gates of heaven. Remember, we are here for you to help you turn your house into a house of prayer. 
Amen and Amen.